What the? This thing is big. It's taller than me. What is on your back? Hey! Hey! hey what do you think what? you're doing? Look, but don't touch. Hey! What? Not for kids. What? Not for kids. Get out of here. Are you guys ready for an unboxing? Hey, wait. Where's everybody? Oh, hey, hey. Hey guys, it's TT and welcome to another big unboxing video. Uh, this might be the biggest unboxing yet. So you guys know I'm a big Transformers fan. We did the XM Optimus Prime video and you guys really liked that. Uh, I got a lot of requests to do a movie version of Optimus Prime. Uh, as you guys know, I am more of a G1 type of guy. I grew up in the 80s, I played with the toys, and the movie versions really didn't remind me of those toys. So I didn't want to start collecting the movie version statues. However, there was this one piece, uh, this piece, the one that you guys are going to see today, that uh, kind of sparked my interest. I mean, this might be the most amazing Transformers movie statue there is. As you can see, it comes in three big boxes. Probably the most boxes I've had to unbox for a statue. I think the Hulkbuster was only two boxes. Uh, so this one beats that one. So we're gonna open up these boxes, show you guys what's inside, and put this big boy together. So these boxes are pretty heavy. This one weighs 48 pounds. This one weighs 36. And this small one weighs 68 pounds. Okay guys, here it is. We got the first box off of the box. So this is the Jet Power Optimus Prime from the Revenge of the Fallen movie. At the end of the movie, Optimus Prime has to battle the Fallen, but the Fallen has taken the spark away from Optimus Prime. Jet Fire sacrifices himself. He gives Optimus Prime his parts, and Optimus Prime goes off and pretty much destroys the Fallen and Megatron. If you haven't seen the movie, go check it out. Even though I spoiled the ending, uh, it's still pretty exciting. So it looks like these boxes might be a little too big to open up here on the table. So we're gonna bring them over to the floor. Let's go. Okay guys, so here we have box number one. It is the smallest box, but yet the heaviest box at 68 pounds. So I have a feeling the base is in this one. Oh, it is heavy. It is heavy. Oh, come on. Oh. Oh. Oh, excuse me. You guys ready for this? Let's check it out. Woo! Well, this whole box was just the base. It is huge. It's like Christmas. All right. So this is kind of upside down, but there's a big Autobot symbol right there in the front. We've got some key holes right there. There's actually a light up feature on the base. Oh, all right. You need to lift weights in order to do this review properly. Okay, guys, here is a look at the bottom of the base. It looks very much like the box. We've got Prime One Studio, Transformers, Museum Masterline, Jet Power, Optimus Prime. Uh, they made 1,200 of these. This is the regular edition. There is a, an exclusive edition that's 500 pieces. That includes a couple things. We'll talk about that in a bit. And I gotta put this down. Oh! So we have two acrylic rods here. Because the jet pack is so heavy, we've got this little kind of sticky foam. These are used as supports. So we also have a, a little piece of foam. Look at That's what the base does to you. If you try and lift the base, don't do it. Okay, so here's box number two. It is the second biggest box. This one is definitely not as heavy. So, oh, and right off the bat, we've got some documentation. We've got the assembly instructions right here. Hopefully you have good eyesight. Man, these boxes are like suctioned in there. I'll tell you, if you guys get this piece, you don't need a workout for that day. Let's take a look. Whoa, <laughs> what? Oh my goodness. This is worse than a Lego set. Okay guys, there you go. Here are all the pieces in the first layer of box two. As you can see, we have a lot of stuff here. We've got some Autobot toes. Um, we also have these pieces. I'm not sure what it is exactly. It looks like a little droid. Well, I guess we'll find out. Here we have a wing. A lot of little armor pieces. Here's a cool looking piece. 
I have no idea what it is. Looks sort of like a can opener. I do recognize this little red and blue flame. Let's check out what's underneath this. Okay, let's get it unwrapped. Here is the second level. As you can see, there are some pretty major pieces here. This thing is huge. Look at this. It's like a gun. Look at that. This is my hand. Pew pew. This thing has some pretty good weight to it. Really detailed piece. We also get this right here. It looks like more of the rocket. Inside, we've got a bunch of little details. Of course, these parts were all from Jetfire. That's kind of a cool effect here on this piece. Space for batteries here, and a big blue light over here. And this piece is actually pretty light. And then, of course, we've got more of those red flames painted to be a little battle damage down there. Here's another part. It looks like the cockpit of the jet. Okay, so this is our biggest box, uh, but only the second heaviest. This is the final box. It says top right there. Let's get her open. All right, looks like we have some Optimus here. And voila, here is the top section of the third box. We've got some very big Optimus Prime legs. These things are huge. Got a giant key with a peg on the bottom, some flames, a lot of mechanical parts. And we've got some wheels on this side. Very nice detailing in there. And we have our two portraits that we get. And this is the mask Optimus with his face mask on. He's got some of that Cybertronian writing. And this thing actually attaches with this giant peg here. Here is the alternate portrait. And this one is the unmasked. This is the one where you can actually see his mouth moving. We've got this big gun, Optimus's hand right here, and it's holding this big blaster. Almost looks like some sort of starship. This thing's got some weight to it. Not sure what this is. I don't know, this thing's got so many different parts to it. Looks like this might be Optimus's arm. We've got like what looks like a bunch of moving parts in there. I guess those would be equivalent to muscles. This is Optimus's left hand. And now let's move on to our final section. Oh. And time to unwrap. <laughs> we did it. The final box. Here is our largest piece right here. It is the Optimus Prime torso. Way in there you can see the Autobot insignia. Here is the top. Tons of detail, look at all of that in there. Here's a look at the back. Looks sort of like a car engine. Very solid looking wing. We've got the windshield wipers on there. I'm not sure what this piece is. We've got this cool piece right here. You tell me it came with a belt. Get your own Optimus Prime belt. I guess this is considered mixed media. Here you can kind of see the elastic band right here on the bottom. It's attached to this little ring. So that's pretty much everything you get. So now let's lay out all the pieces on the table and put this guy together. Okay guys, here it is, all the parts for the Jet Power Optimus Prime. Uh, there are a lot of pieces here on the table. Probably the most pieces I've ever had to deal with when building a statue, but this is gonna be awesome. So I've got the assembly instructions right here. There are 87 different steps to this statue, but let's build it.
Okay guys, here he is, the man, the myth, the monstrosity, Jet Power Optimus Prime. As you can see, this is a huge piece, probably one of the biggest Transformer movie statues. This thing is about 37 inches tall, 28 and a half inches wide, and about 25 inches deep. And in case you guys were wondering, Optimus himself, from his feet to his head, is about 26 inches. The width of the base is about 28 and a half inches but the depth of the base, a little under 22 inches. The extra depth comes from these giant wings that come off of the back. They stick out a little bit past the base. This thing is full of detail, probably the most detailed piece that I've ever seen. Definitely the most detailed in my collection. There are tons of little parts and pieces that you have to stick on here, and they all attach magnetically. For most of the quarter scale human statues that we put together on this channel, it's basically just putting on some arms, some legs, maybe some alternate hands, a head, and a few accessories. But for this guy, we had to put on his toes, the back of his foot, all these little fender pieces, all the armor, the little wings, the guns, his hands, everything kind of built on top of the last thing that you attached. So we would start off with his legs and torso and basically just add on from there. The machine gun that he has is probably made up of 10 different parts in itself. So this of course is the movie version of Optimus Prime that we see I think in the first three movies and then he gets a different look. I like this one because you can actually see the front of the semi truck on his chest we can see the windows as well as the windshield wipers, part of the front grille that's been split in half. We also see the passenger and driver's side door with the mirrors. So I have a funny story regarding the movie version of Optimus Prime. Uh, we are actually filming in Hollywood at Grauman's Chinese Theater. We were doing an episode of the Lego Movie Adventure, if you guys remember, way back then. So we turned around and all these people were swarming Optimus Prime in his truck form, of course. So we ran over there and the kids were able to get some cool pictures in front of the truck. And I think I'm gonna be displaying that picture alongside this big boy right here. Since we don't get his truck form with this statue, I think it'll be cool to kind of see that in a picture and see the kids as well. So let's take a look at the piece itself. It's sitting on this massive base. So it's a museum type base. It's sort of just like a display pedestal. I don't think it's supposed to be any place specific. It could be someplace on Cybertron, maybe on a spaceship. It's got the Autobot insignia, and there are also these cool up lights on all four sides. And I'll show you guys all the light ups in a little bit. We've got what looks like ventilation in the middle. So it's this nice metallic gray. We've also got a darker gray to give it some depth. And we've got some red and gold accents as well. So moving on to Optimus Prime himself, like I mentioned, there are several different pieces that compose his feet. We've got two giant toe pieces. The heel piece actually connects separately. We've got all these other intricate parts that I have no idea what they do. I think that's sort of the requirement for uh, Michael Bay Transformers is they have to have tons of little pieces that have no function. Moving up, we can see the red and blue fender. Right below that, we have one of the wheels. We have part of Jetfire's wing in there. We have the other two wheels of the semi. Some of the wires and tubing almost look like veins. On his left hand, he's got a blaster of some sort. Uh, it's attached to his forearm. On his right arm, he's got this massive machine gun. And the cool part about this is the little ammunition that's on this elastic strap right here and you can kind of pose it different ways depending on how you want it to look. So Optimus comes with two portraits. Right now he's got his unmasked portrait and when he goes into battle, he changes to his mass portrait. There are a lot of little details on these as well. We've got some Cybertronian hieroglyphics. We've got some on the side of his earpiece as well as on each side of his mouth. And here's a look comparing the Prime 1 Optimus head to the XM Studios Optimus Prime. Uh, from the front, you can tell that the G1 Optimus is a little bit wider and chunkier. We've got a bigger mask, the eyes are closer together, and the sides of his head come out a little wider, almost as if he's wearing earphones. Looking at the profile, you can see that the movie version is also a bit longer. He's got a little hooked chin. Uh, there are some other pieces that come down on the sides. The back of his head is much flatter, and it also has these added details. Cool comparison, of course, I do like the G1. So I'm probably gonna be displaying this guy with the masthead, just because it resembles the G1 a little bit more. So moving on to what I consider to be the most extreme part of this statue 
is the rocket packs. So of course this is part of Jetfire after he sacrifices himself and they combine his parts with Optimus. And we can really see all the little details. So Jetfire was originally a Decepticon. He later became an Autobot after he didn't agree with the ideals of the Decepticons. And he took the form of an SR-71 Blackbird, which was a reconnaissance aircraft that was used in the 1960s. So on the back, we can see parts of the wings. Of course, we've got the two rocket engines. What I really thought was cool that I didn't notice the first time I saw this was that you can actually see parts of the cockpit on Optimus Prime's shoulders. Basically, the front of the plane splits in half and becomes Optimus Prime's shoulder pads. So I thought that was really cool. You can see all the little details on it, but these things are just massive. And I think they're responsible for making this truly a wow factor statue. Without them, it would just be Optimus Prime standing in a museum pose, but the added jet power just takes this thing to a whole different level. All right, so this is a movie piece, but you guys know I like to add some comic book history in with my videos. So I brought this comic out. This is Transformers number 11, the first appearance of Jetfire in the comic books. So the story of Jetfire actually differs a lot between the cartoon, the comic book, the movie, and also the toys. So when Hasbro first made the Jetfire toy, he looked a lot like the Macross and Robotech Valkyrie ships. And later when they made the animated series, they no longer had the rights to use that design. So they had to change his look, they had to give him a new name. His name is Skyfire. So in the cartoon, he was actually a friend of Starscream, and they came down to Earth to scout out Energon. Jetfire crashes, and he is frozen in snow. When the Decepticons come back to Earth, they find him, they thaw him out, He's more of a scientist rather than a conqueror, so he decides to leave the Decepticons and join the Autobots. In the comic books, he's actually created by Shockwave, but he's defeated and rebuilt and given life by Optimus Prime. So it's kind of fitting that in the comic book, Optimus Prime gives life to Jetfire, and in The Revenge of the Fallen, Jetfire actually sacrifices himself to give life back to Optimus Prime. So there are several light up features with this statue. There are four big lights on the base. There is a little red button that you just press. It does give some nice up lighting to his legs, but it's really not enough to illuminate the entire statue. Also, we have light up features on the back of the rockets. There is a blue light in there and it adds a nice little bit of color. So we get two of those we also have a light up on his machine gun. There's a little hidden button on the front and it kind of puts out a little amber light. Depending on the angle you're looking at it, it might be a little hard to see. However, it does put out quite a bit of light. And finally, we have the light up on the portraits. Both of them light up the same. There's a little panel on the back that pops open and there's a little button on the back. It actually looks like a very loose part at first, but that's actually the button that turns on the eyes. So those were the light up features. Definitely not mandatory, but it's always nice to have. So this is the regular version of the Jetpower Optimus Prime. There is an exclusive version. It costs $200 more. And basically you get the Fallen Spark, which Optimus can hold in his right hand, and also the Fallen's Command Staff that he holds in his left hand. Now with the Fallen Spark, there is no way I would display this guy without that big gun. Uh, that is a major part of this piece, and I can't see replacing that with a little ball. The staff would be really cool to have, however, for $200, uh, i rather save the $200 and put it towards something else. There are a couple of little things that I don't like, and those things are his hands. If we look on his left hand right there, his thumb is on the inside of his fist. Now, if you guys know anything about fighting, which I think Optimus Prime here is going into battle, obviously, but when you're fighting, you never want to put your thumb on the inside of your fist. Why? It's because when you hit something hard, you're going to break your thumb. All right, so you always want to have your thumb on the outside of your fist. You can punch something and your thumb is fine. Uh, but Optimus, for some reason, they decided to put his thumb on the inside of his hand. It's not something most people would see right away. Obviously, you're looking at these giant jetpacks and all the detail on his body, so you're not really paying attention to his hands. But that's probably my biggest dislike about this entire piece. That is a definite pro to having that command staff because obviously he's holding the command staff. His finger is not in his hand. My second dislike is his other hand. In his right hand, he's holding his blaster and he's got his index finger stretched out like he's pulling a trigger. 
However, there's no trigger. There's not even a handle for the gun. So that really didn't make sense. But again, uh, most people aren't looking at his hands. So this piece also comes with these two acrylic support rods. Um, the company says that it should be okay without them. However, they do include these just in case. They don't actually snap in anywhere. They've got a piece of foam on each end. It goes right underneath the rocket and rests on this little circle on the base. So here it is with the acrylic rods attached and it's basically just to support these massive structures back here. And some statues over time have leaning issues and that's mainly due to insufficient support. So it's not the most pretty thing, however it is clear, so hopefully people don't see it as much, but it is better than a leaning or cracking statue. So other than that, I don't see many flaws in this piece. It is very big, it is very heavy, it does have a giant footprint, so it's gonna be very hard to find a place for this guy. Right now, this is the biggest statue in my collection. He's bigger than the XM Studios Hulkbuster that I unboxed in another video. That one is still my favorite, however but this guy is definitely in the top five, even though he's a Bayformer. So I don't know how many other movie Transformers I'm gonna get. Uh, these things are massive, and like I said, I'm more of a G1 guy, so you're gonna be seeing more of the G1 Transformers coming up soon. Just to let you guys in on a little secret, uh, a couple of them are bigger than this guy. Okay, so that was the Jet Power Optimus Prime from Prime One Studio. Stay tuned for more big unboxing videos on this channel and also check out my new channel, DT's Geek Show, for more exclusive collectible content. Thanks for watching and we'll see you guys next time. Bye bye.